In one of his prominent articles about real and vulnerable economy, President Yoweri Museveni deliberates to the biblical teaching on Matthew chapter 7, verse 26 to 27, about the unwise man that did not adhere to advice and went ahead to build a house on a sand, and when the rains, winds and floods poured, the house collapsed. The president relates to Ugandans who do not adhere to his wisdom to fully transform Ugandans into the money economy, risking an ending like the foolish man whose house suffered a great fall. I am in I don't play in the garden. When I'm in the garden, I cultivate. Drawing background from his teaching experience since 1965, President Yoweri Museveni, who boasts of always teaching for low pay, says making money is not by witchcraft, but through productivity. We do things by work and sweat and sacrifice. The ones who eat what is already done, those are also there. But, but that's not a problem. So money is not generated by magic, by witchcraft. It is generated by struggle to produce. To President Yoweri Museveni, production and manufacturing is second to his belief if prosperity is to be fully achieved. He describes peasant ideologists as slumbers who are either enemies of progress or just adamant to tap into production cycle, which he repeatedly talks about. Yeah, of course, by the president talking about it over and over again, it implies that he has not, we have not reached where we should be. And therefore he has to still keep talking about it. So um, maybe the investors, those who are investing, need to pick this message and see to it that we process our agricultural products here rather than exporting them raw because that would have or bring much more benefit to the population but also more, more importantly that money uh, economy that the president talks about would be achieved. We cannot go on working because it's a Nkola, their government, Nkola, uh -huh. Now you find people are just uh, Kongola, not bothered. Playing Rudo, Rudo in, in, in the trading centers. Several interventions to enhance agricultural production, like promoting agricultural mechanization, fronting poverty alleviation programs to transform Ugandans still locked in the subsistence sector, among others, been put in place though they have proved not to be the yardstick to boost production in accordance to President Museveni's dream, leading to unanswered questions on hiccups to a drive to the money economy. If people can grow food by being forced, why don't we just get the military to force them to grow food? So the campaign by Mr. Museveni to, to turn 67% of the population into money market, cannot work because he wants to do it by giving money instead of getting people to work. Uganda receives the highest amount of rainfall in the world. I must say that Ugandans are more busy on politicking than going into enterprises which bring money in people's hands. When it comes to issues of politics, people are up there and you know they are seated from morning to evening discussing on a Marua joint. Interacting with some of the members of parliament who share roles in oversight and budget allocation, mixed reactions emerge on the need to understand how to deal with poverty-stricken population. The problem is not about President Seven. The problem is not about a member of parliament. The problem is you. It is only you as a Ugandan who can choose the kind of life you want. The member of parliament for Shima Municipality, Dixon Kateshumbwa, say some government programs face delays in implementation which leads to improper calculation of harvest and market. For example, if it is uh, the beginning of the year, you need, you know that you have a development budget that is very small in terms of the proportionate of the overall budget. The activities that generate money must be front-loaded so that they create an economic value that can be taxed and feed back into the economy. Whereas the members of parliament support the idea of production as preached by President Yoweri Museveni, 
the fruits are yet to be achieved as the gold diggers are still at large. Our biggest problem in this country, we have very good policies, we don't implement them. We have resources, a lot of our money is going into corruption. The government collects money, a lot of money, it puts in one sack, and then you find a report saying that over, not, over 10 trillion was stolen in six months. That means the government lost one trillion per month. Then who will have, where will the people get the money? Because let's not hoodwink Ugandans with thinking that they are, you, we are making them rich. When actually money is going to a little few people. The partial success of government poverty alleviation programs is also attributed to partisan politics and poor balancing of the country's resources. PDM started with NRM Central Executive Committee in Jove. It was never discussed by local government, by cabinet, and then he goes forcing it down on two people, and then he thinks it will work. That's why every day there is a story about uh, the failure of that program. You find that the people that are running... Uh, uh, these are the, 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 that are running PDM today are saying this is our movement thing. It is, it is ours. They have made it partisan. You know, it's not about the numbers, but it's about the effectiveness. I am very comfortable with helping five people in Kirkum district, but I see that the return for investment that government has put is there. So the president should continue preaching. Are we going to get tired of preaching the Bible, about the Bible, about Jesus? He came a long time ago. The Bible is there for everyone to preach, I mean to read. But why do we have preachers talking about the same thing? So let us continue talking until everybody is in the money economy. Government has now invested much hopes in the current parish development model as the main drive to social economic transformation targeting the country's poorest individuals. Like in Europe now, if you go to Europe and you look for peasants, they are not there. You go and look for peasants in Europe, like, like your parents. They are not there. The whole society is either middle class or skilled working class. So how long shall we go in Africa like this? With peasants, peasants. Daniel Mugoya, Gloria Gwitabinji, UBC News.